All right, we're going to talk about the initial setup if you're brand new to Xactimate. My icon's in my toolbar, so you can't see it, but I've just activated the little Xactimate icon. Here's opens. It'll open just like this. It'll be totally blank. Go ahead in the user ID box, if you can see right there. Just put your first name. Click OK. It'll say user ID was not found. Would you like to log in some new user? Select yes. Would you like to use a personal password? Select no. I recommend no. My computer is already protected by a password. No need to have it in the software as well. And my situation. When it pops up, it'll be just like this. We'll have our control center. I'm going to go ahead and expand it. At the top, you'll see, here's my username. Here is my exact analysis address, and we'll talk about that in class. That's how people are going to send things to you. It's very similar to an, on the user end, it's very similar to an email type of a system. If I open up Outlook in my computer, I've got an inbox, I've got an outbox, sent items. Click connect, and it'll bring everything in that's currently uh, signed to you through exact analysis, and export everything that you're uh, trying to upload. Very simple, very straightforward. Over here on the right, you'll see a search box. It's a great help box. It really, really is useful. It defaults in the training topics to subjects that are relevant to the screen that we're on. So right now we're on the control center and the questions here are control center related. If I were in the project screen, then these questions would refer to that. I'm going to go ahead and X out of this. If you ever need to get back into it, just click on this little word help right here and pop it right back up. All right. My most recent 10 projects are going to show up here. A preview of that project and my sketch screen or what I've drawn so far will show up in my project preview box. There's also a way to get the notes in that file to show up there. Pretty, pretty handy stuff. Let's go right to user preferences. We're in the dashboard now. We're going to go right to user preferences. Talk about a couple things to make your life easier going forward. Zip postal code matching right here. Go ahead and check on that. That way when I enter the correct zip code for the loss location, the system will automatically assign or attach the correct price list for that location. Real easy. Anytime I can remove thought, I'm gaining efficiency and that's a great place to start. Maximum depreciation. You'll notice it says 100%. I generally do not like 100% and I'll tell you why. Uh, on the adjuster side, if it's there and it's doing its job, it generally has some value. And here's, here's the example. If I depreciate by age and use and paint is supposed to live five years. I put in the system that the paint is 10 years old, it, the system will just say, well, it's lived its whole life and apply 100% depreciation. So max out somewhere south of 8 or somewhere south of 100. I also like to depreciate by age and use and not by percent. Percent is somewhat arbitrary. Age and use is age and use. Just let the machine come up with it. Right here on labor efficiency, restoration service remodel and insurance claims well over 90 percent are going to be restoration service remodel because that's the house is still there we just need to address what's covered and what's damaged so new construction the labor efficiencies are way way higher uh, so the price goes down so we're going to stick with restoration service remodel uh, the only time as a claim rep that i use new construction is if the building is gone Tidal surge took it, tornado took it, whatever. Apply BSC, we're going to talk about this in depth. Uh, this is a lightning rod in the insurance industry. Just leave it at yes for now. If you get specific guidance from a carrier to modify it, I'll tell you in class how to do that. Uh, overhead and profit, let's say 10 and 10. Right now I've got 20% overhead and profit on my claim. If I check this box, I will have 
21% because it's going to add 10% overhead and then 10% profit to the total of the job plus the overhead. Company header, we're going to use the one that is dictated to us. It's real simple. Claim rep. Go ahead and click on claim rep. A box that looks like this will pop up. Go ahead and put your name in there the way you want it to print. Not all caps, not all lowercase, the way you want it to print because this information will print on the cover page of the estimate. Uh, street, city, zip, the mailing address for the carrier or the contractor that you're working with will be in the header most likely and not in this section so go ahead and skip over that. Whatever phone number you want that policy holder to call go ahead and put it in this box. with any appropriate extensions. If you use a voicemail system, go ahead and put the voicemail extension in here. Email. If you use an email, use your professional email. I will caution you, uh, if you use personal email to correspond with policyholders, and that case ever goes to court, personal email is subject to discovery if you use it to communicate with an insured. So if you want to have um, adjuster at gmail, that. If you have a company assigned email that you do want correspondence to go to, go ahead and put that. And now when I click OK, I am the default claim rep. Every claim I create from this point forward is going to have that default claim rep assigned to it. Let's go over to system settings. I don't want to hang out there very long. Uh, we're going to click on system settings we're going to go down to configuration near the top and 27 has a project recycle bin so every time I manually save not auto save but manually save an estimate a firm copy is saved on my hard drive number of days to keep project backups I go ahead and jack it all the way up to 90 that way you don't even have to worry about it as long as it can be there that's as high as the number it'll accept Go ahead and put that in there. So, hopefully, this helps, and I look forward to seeing you in class.